In normal day-to-day -day interactions, we get information in two main ways. First, we get information from what we are focusing on, where our center of attention is. But at the same time, we are also getting information from ambient sources, such as light in the area, the general noise level, temperature and airflow, all giving us information about things like the number of people around, the weather, and the time of day. Traditional computer interfaces, however, constrain human-computer interactions mostly to a very foreground activity. A computer requires complete attention to monitors, keyboards, and mice. The Tangible Media Group at the MIT Media Laboratory has designed the Ambient Room, a structure in which we can explore the use of ambient media to convey information. Using ambient media, we can interact with digital information using a background channel, that is, our peripheral senses. This enables us to take full advantage of our cognitive capabilities, focusing on one foreground task while monitoring changing data with subconscious processes. Ambient media seems best suited to the display of changing information that we wish to monitor continuously, such as weather, network traffic, stock prices, or the activities of a child or loved one. Our loved one at the lab is our hamster. She lives in the corner of the tangible media group's area at the media lab. This is a physical icon, or ficon, representing the hamster. When her wheel turns, that activity is displayed through vibration of the hamster ficon in the room. But this is a fairly foreground display and could be distracting. So, we can move that information to a more ambient and subtle medium, such as the reflection of water ripples on the ceiling. The frequency of waves reflect the frequency of the spinning wheel and gives us an idea of the hamster's activity without continual distraction. With the information displayed in this way, we could be working on some task at our desk, writing a letter or checking our email, for example, while subconsciously monitoring the hamster's activity. The information may, however, naturally move its way into our consciousness in one of three ways. One, we consciously decide to check on the hamster's activity. Two, our level of engagement in our foreground task is low and our focus wanders around the room. Or three, the information becomes anomalous. For example, if the activity were very aggressive, or if it were to start or stop suddenly. The ripples on the ceiling are just one example of ambient media. Some of the other ambient media we have been exploring include sound, lighting, airflow, and projection on the walls of the room. On this wall, you can see some spots that are appearing and disappearing. They are actually a reflection of the activity level in the atrium of our building. The probability of a spot appearing and the length of time that the spots remain is related to the number of people in the space and their flux. Again, the idea is that with an abstract display off to the side, we can be monitoring this below the conscious level more or less while we are focusing on something else. Manipulation of information in this environment becomes an interesting issue as well. The hamster ficon that we showed you is one example of how to move information around to different output displays. This is a very specific object that always represents the information about our hamster. We probably don't, however, want a physical icon for every source of information that we might ever display. This bottle is an example of a more generic container that can hold any information. Imagine that we are a systems administrator and have associated network traffic with the bottle. We can then open up the bottle and let the information out. The sound of traffic that we are hearing is then a continual display of the network traffic. In general, this sound will remain just below the conscious level, but if the traffic becomes choppy or stops all of a sudden, our attention will likely be grabbed. If we decide later that we no longer want to monitor that information, we can close up the bottle. One last thing that is occurring in this environment is that the light on the ceiling is moving across the room to give an indication of the time of day. Instead of having to consciously check your watch, you can have an ambient and continuous sense of the time from the position of the light. Since this happens slowly over a long period, we can use this clock as a tangible interface to past information from the day. When we turn the hand back, we can move back through time, and can then review the past states of the environment and watch the lights change. The sound of rain you are hearing could be displaying how important it is for you to check your email throughout the day. Light rain may mean you have a few unread messages. Thunder could mean that your mailbox is extremely full. Notice also that we are projecting a shadow of where the hands used to be so that we have a reference for going back to the correct time. When we get back, the shadow will disappear. In this video, we have introduced the ambient room. The ambient room enables users to be aware of information at the periphery using ambient media in an augmented space. By using ambient media, we can take advantage of our brain's natural abilities both as a parallel processor and as an attention manager.